Groundhog's Day has been on shaky ground for years. I mean, practically being taken over by a 1993 movie that, if we're really honest, is pretty hard to watch. And that's even with Bill Murray. What about Independence Day? Well, Fourth of July is still less about fighting off aliens than blowing off fingers. Another species has technology to travel here from 90 billion light years away just to get outsmarted by the Fresh Prince. Even less believable. America elects a B-list celebrity president? Groundhog's Day was a holiday before Valentine's Day. Great meeting at the calendar company. All right, we got New Year's, we got St. Paddy's, nothing in between. How about a holiday with love and hearts? Nah, FTD will just offer roses for $19, then charge you 40 to deliver. What else you got? How about a holiday with small woodland creatures that, oh, get this, Predict the weather. You are management material. I was just goofing. Groundhog's Day can be traced back to the ancient Celtic festival, Imbolc, which translates to in the belly, which I believe had something to do with shacks here in Boston. I know it's pronounced Celtic, but that would ruin the joke. The outdoor holiday festival celebrated the midway point between winter solstice and the spring equinox, which led to a pretty miserable time in those mead ticket lines. In France and England, the weather rodent was a bear, harder to hold up to the crowd and a lot more scratchy. Germany went with a badger, lighter, but they still went through a pretty hefty Band-Aid budget. When a group of Germans immigrated to Pennsylvania, they realized they forgot all their badgers at the kennel. Panicking, they went with the next closest farm that they could find, the woodchuck. Realizing that Woodchuck Day would be filled with annoying elementary school tongue twister contests, they decided to call them groundhogs. Oh, fun fact, they almost went with their second choice. We were so close to celebrating Barncat Day. Who says Germans aren't fun? The life of a weather marmot isn't all movies and festivals. In 1879, a woman mistook the furry prognosticator for a rabbit, sent her dog after it. According to the Altoona Tribune, it was the most delicious meal she ever sat down to. No word on how many weeks of winter being on a plate next to mashed potatoes means. Punk's Tawny Phil became the holiday's face hog and his popularity continues to soar with everyone, except maybe his lesser known younger brother, Punk's Tawny Pete. Phil comes out, sees his own shadow. <sighs> what a skill. Dude's got like a 39% accuracy rate. Still gets a festival. Been that way his whole life. Ten years ago, PETA asked Phil's keepers to replace him with a robotic groundhog. Mock PETA if you want, but groundhogs are still normally hibernating at this time. Think about if somebody woke you up from a deep sleep, then dragged you out in front of a February crowd in just your night fur, strictly for their entertainment. I know once I see my shadow, it is hard to go back to hibernating. A decade later, Peter tried again, suggesting Punxsutawney use an animatronic groundhog. Oh, laugh if you want, but who's gonna mess with Robohog? He might still get six weeks of winter, but they'll be quiet. Now, about Valentine's Day. 